Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's Garrick, and today we have a banger video for you guys. We're doing the do's and don'ts of buying and selling vintage. Let's go. But first, I gotta thank you guys for all the amazing support I've had. 50 subscribers in like a week is pretty crazy. TikTok, Instagram, I'm getting all the messages. Thank you guys for the YouTube videos, giving me comments, suggestions, ideas, the whole shebang. The support has just been literally insane. I cannot thank you guys enough for it. Congratulations. Congratulations. So if you guys fuck with the video, make sure you guys drop a like on it. It really helps me out. And with that, let's get right into it. Virgil Abloh, the creator and founder of Off-White, has even gone to say, streetwear is dead. Not that it's just dead, but that vintage is the next wave in fashion. Now, I get it. Buying and selling vintage and understanding what is vintage and what is not vintage is super hard to do. I've been doing this for three years and I still don't know everything there is to know. Personally, I consider vintage anything that was made 15 years or prior. And a lot of the time, you guys can tell when it was made by the copyright dates or on the tags. Now, I get it. It's hard to tell what year the tags come from. Look at all these Gildan tags. Look at all these Nike tags. They're all different. And eventually, just by doing it and going out, you'll eventually learn. But once you get the hang of it, vintage is a great way to show off your style. And if you want a place to get some cool vintage, make sure you guys check out Lost Threads Co. Shameless plug. I know. Cue the meme. Whatever. I don't care. No. Shout out my website. We're doing a big drop on the October 30th. I don't know if it's actually gonna be, this video is gonna be out by then, but I, I hope so. I'm gonna try. Okay. As you can see, this video is gonna take a lot more editing than my previous videos, and I'm still kind of getting used to being on camera like this, but check out my website. Let me know how I did on this video. It would really mean the world to me, and let's keep going. So now that you know what vintage is and how to identify it, let's talk about five tips when buying and selling vintage. Number one know what you're looking at vintage is so hard to identify with all the different years stuff came from and all the different types of vintage it's hard to know what the stuff's actually worth so make sure when you guys are buying stuff do some research on it go to fucking ebay or depop or look at these things to make sure you're not getting scammed out of hundreds of dollars do it because it happens all the time just do it a great piece of advice I always like to give is use Google Lens. I don't know how people don't know about this, but if you just go into the Google app somewhere on the screen right here, hopefully I'll have a picture showing it, and you click the camera button, you can search up an image of the t-shirt you're looking for, and all the search results will come up on Google. It's literally insane, and I don't know how people don't use it more. And like I said previously, a lot of it's just knowing when the tags are. If you know what year the tags are, it's a lot easier to put the value on something. And unfortunately, you can do a lot of research, but mostly it just comes with going to the thrift stores or buying stuff yourself. You can also just ask friends or other sellers who sell vintage. Most of us are always willing to help out and I love telling people so they don't get scammed in the future. Speaking of other sellers, don't just hit up thrift stores. Yes, thrifts are a great source to get stuff so that you can sell on your own or you can find stuff personal. But if you're really looking for something that has a personal connection to you, you usually gotta hit up an independent seller or go on to resell apps like eBay, Mercari, etc. So by hitting these independent resellers, a lot of them are willing to give out deals. And I know for myself, usually people hit me up on DM say, hey, this piece is cool for my mom or my girlfriend or whatever I'm getting it for. I just think she'll really like it. I'm always willing to give a steal on it because I know it's going to a good home to somebody who's gonna really appreciate it. Okay. So usually, rather than buying from places like Round 2 or Cool Kicks or anybody else who sells vintage high-end, not that those places are bad, just usually you're going to get a more like family-like experience with independent sellers. Nice. Now, I'm not saying all of them are good, so I'm going to give you a few different examples other than just my shop of people who are great sellers and somebody who I've had an actual really good experience with. So make sure you guys check them out and just tell them Law sent you. Or, or don't. It doesn't really matter. No. And that brings me to my third point. Make sure you guys try to buy stuff that you can resell in the future. One of the best things about vintage is that it's already old and it's already secondhand. So by buying something, you can usually resell it in the future. Like I bought this Wiley e. Coyote t-shirt for $200, a t-shirt for $200, it sounds crazy. I wore it for two years and then resold it for $300. It's one of the coolest things about it because you can still wear the stuff as long as you don't get like stains or holes or anything like that on it. It's still gonna resell in the future and you're technically not losing that money, you're putting it into an asset. 
obviously not everything is an asset, but just try to look for stuff that you know that is gonna have resale in the future. For example, I saw a lot of Disney stuff on Lost Threads Co. That's just because I love Disney, I grew up with it. However, I knew there is a lot of other people who love Disney and grew up with it. So when I buy stuff that's Disney, I can wear it for myself for a little bit and then I can sell it on my website to somebody else who loves Disney and that same piece can get double the enjoyment instead of just going to a landfill and sitting away. And speaking of how Disney is meaningful to me, try to buy vintage that's meaningful to you. There's so many different types of vintage out there. NASCAR, sports tees, Disney, just random graphics, art tees. There's literally every category of vintage out there. So find something that means something to you like I like soccer, I like Disney, Looney Tunes characters, certain things that have nostalgia for me, I can go get that stuff and rock it on my body. So it's like, it's just like this cool like thing where like I'm already showing off like just something that means something to me or it has meaning to me, or it's just something I think is fucking sick. Either way, it's cool, but like just know that when you're buying vintage, you can buy almost anything you can think of. So make sure you guys do your research and just really think about what you guys like. And of course, if anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to DM me on Instagram. I try to get to all my DMs. Sometimes I get a big flooded, but I love answering your comments and questions. Honestly, I've seen and had so many great interactions with y'all that it really never hurts just to reach out. And last but not least, number five, don't be afraid to buy bootleg. It's no shame in buying bootleg tees. First of all, there's a ton of vintage bootlegs, like the ones when you walked out of the concert back in the 80s and 90s, and there was those dudes selling the t-shirts on the street for like 10, 20 bucks. Y'all give me a dollar! Yeah, those are obviously bootlegs, but they still go for money. If you have Tupac or Biggie bootlegs, I'm probably gonna put them on the screen right here. Look at how much those sold for. It's crazy. And there's a bunch of new amazing artists who are doing bootlegs for themselves. So they're taking old styles of t-shirts and they're printing them on new high quality tees and giving them that vintage look. I have two right here that I have. I don't think they're on Lost Threads Co, but they're just some of my favorite pieces that I keep in my collection. So if you guys can't find anything that's actually vintage, hit up your local bootleg dealer and see if there's anything available. And if you like the style of these tees right here, let me know because I've been really thinking about making some. I want like a Phineas and Ferb and Johnny Tess one, just like some of the shows I grew up on as a kid. And I really want to make those and nobody's making them. So like, I think I'm going to do like, try to do like a limited run of like 40 or 50 and just like sell enough to make my money back so I can have like two of those t-shirts for myself. So just comment that like somewhere in the YouTube comments or DM me on Instagram, etc. I actually thought of one more thing just because of a stupid recent situation I had at Goodwill. When new people come into the community, welcome them. It only helps the community grow and that means the vintage you're selling is only going to be worth more and the whole community is only going to be bigger and bigger and bigger and that's just what helps all of us. Stupid. I really have no idea if this was a short or a long video. I can't really tell while I'm recording it. I guess we'll see when we're editing. Um, but I just want to do five quick tips and hear them on the screen just so you guys can do a quick reminder. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end of the video and stay humble, stay blessed. Shout out Paul Cantu. Peace.